Bottom of the ninth is back and ready to get the semester rolling. Season three, y'all. You may have been stuck at home with cabin fever this week, but the LSU basketball team caught a fever of their own against Kentucky on Tuesday. All this and more coming up. So get on the edge of your seat and put on your rally cap because it's the bottom of the ninth and it starts right now. Welcome to this semester's first edition of the Bottom of the Ninth. I'm Alex Cheney. And I'm Patrick Clay. Thanks for tuning in. Alex, we made it to season three. I don't know why they renewed us. Like, seriously, again. Tiger TV, what are you what? doing? I don't know. Like, we, I mean, clearly. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but you may know we almost didn't have our show today, thanks to a good old friend we like to call Mother Nature. Let's take a look at this footage that I got myself at my uh, humble abode. You know, I dabble my it's toes in the, dabble. in the news water every now and then, but it was uh, some icy weather out there. It was. It almost looked like Minnesota, but not really, do because you, it really wasn't that bad. Do you know what Minnesota looks like? Uh, no, but I know what Chicago looks like, and it's probably pretty similar. That's not Anyway, Minnesota. even though we've been snowed out of class the last two days, the LSU men's basketball team broke through the cold to bring the heat against Kentucky. Taylor Curette reports. An ice-covered Baton Rouge couldn't keep away the 12,000-plus fans that poured into the Pete Maravich Assembly Center on Tuesday night. Nor could it hinder LSU's 87-82 upset of 11th-ranked Kentucky. In a game that featured seven McDonald's High School All-Americans for the Wildcats, it was LSU's Johnny O'Brien III who dominated the court on primetime television as his season-high 29 points led a game-opening 22-6 lead, which the Tigers never gave up. Um, really big, really big. You know, to get to get that big lead early and just not look back, man, it was really big. It really helped us. We really just kept pushing. But it was a team effort that propelled LSU over Kentucky on Tuesday, as it topped the Wildcats in nearly every statistical category, and four Tigers reached double figures. You know, we, we just play team ball, though. Whoever's high, we try to find that guy and get it to him. For O'Brien, junior Anthony Hickey, and senior Siobhan Coleman and Andre Stringer, this was their first win against Kentucky. Yeah, you know, we got a lot of basketball left. We got a lot of teams left to play. Getting a win over Kentucky is very big for us. You know, we got more games to win to get the NCAA tournament. The win, perhaps, was sweetest for Hickey, former Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky. As the Kentucky native watched the final seconds tick down, what LSU accomplished on Tuesday night came to fruition. I, I grew up watching Kentucky. Um, Toby Smith was playing. That's, that's, that's something I always watch is, 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 is Kentucky. And then coming down here, that's, that's like my rival. I look at Kentucky like LSU and Bama. That's, that's my rival. So getting this win is very important. And I'm just glad we was able to pull it all together and come together. This is now the fourth LSU win over Kentucky in the past 10 years. The previous two times, the Tigers made the NCAA tournament. Taylor Curette, Tiger TV Sports. Thanks, Taylor. So looking a little past the game, Alex, uh, this LSU team's kind of been all over the place. You know, they've got losses to teams like Rhode Island and even Alabama, but yet wins against teams like Missouri and now, of course, Kentucky. How do you think LSU can get a little more consistency heading into the home stretch? Well, I think they, they can find consistency by continually pounding the paint to Johnny O'Brien III. You just got to let your big guy do work in the paint. He put up 29 points against a very stout Kentucky defense against Julius Randle, who is considered to be at least a top five pick in the coming up NBA draft. Let him pace you. Don't try to get too fancy on the wings. Don't take too many threes. Consistent baskets in the paint will lead this team to victory. But you also saw in these highlights how threes out, you, the three-point shot for Ellis, you can definitely open it up for Johnny O'Brien down well, low. Well, of course. I mean, the outside shot opens up the paint. For so sure. Be great. Patrick, after a big victory like they had on Tuesday, do you think LSU is learning to win close games? You know, I'd like to say yes, but I still have to see this happen on the road. It's easy to, you know, close out a close game in your friendly confines, especially with the biggest student section crowd of the year. Now, of course, against Kentucky, it was a big deal, but they still let the uh, – they still let Kentucky come back with a bunch of threes late, but thankfully their lead was big enough. I want to see LSU start doing this on the road. They had a chance against Alabama, against Ole Miss, and let those games slip away, which could come back to haunt them come tournament time. So we'll see what happens, but right now I'm going to say maybe. Okay. But coming up, 
The biggest game of them all is this weekend, the Super Bowl. Our good friend Josh Nix drops by the set to preview the game with us, and we give you our picks for who we think will take home the Lombardi Trophy. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. And now we'd like to bring back our good friend and NFL guru, Josh Nix. Nice to see you, Josh. Nice to see both of you. It's been a long winter break, but we're finally back at it, so let's get to it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Josh, you've given us so many great picks over the years, but it seems you saved your best for last. Let's take a look at this. Before the season started, you correctly pick both the conference championships and the teams that would represent the, each conference in the Super Bowl. That's pretty impressive. Hey, what can I say? You know, I'm just, I've been lucky. I've been on a hot streak recently, and I'm ready to keep it going. Well, we'll find out who you do pick to win the Super Bowl, but first, let's get some more of the storylines. Moving on, during Super Bowl media days this week, now infamous Seattle quarterback Richard Sherman called Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning out for throwing ducks. Let's quack. take a look at his response. Quack, quack. I believe it to be true as well. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, he, he said he's a smart player, and uh, I think that's... Uh, I don't think that's a real reach, what he's saying there. Uh, uh, I do throw ducks. Uh, I've thrown a lot of uh, yards and touchdowns ducks, and uh, so I am, uh, I'm actually quite proud of it. Josh, does he throw ducks? Essentially, yes. But the thing <laughs> is, it doesn't matter because he is so great at reading defenses. He knows where all defensive players are going to be. He knows where to get the ball to his receivers. So he does throw ducks, but hey, 55 touchdowns worth of ducks is pretty good. The ducks know where they need to fly. Well, Josh, uh, let's get a little more to the storylines. What do you think the X factor will be for the Broncos to win this game? Denver's X factor is definitely going to be their run defense, although there were times in the regular season where some opposing running backs ran successfully against Denver. They've been stout over the past month. They turned San Diego and New England into one-dimensional offenses, and that was key in their victories in each of those games. Now, obviously, Seattle's run game is a different beast with Marshawn Lynch in that offensive line. But if Denver's run defense steps up again to the task and plugs the hole for Lynch, they'll turn Seattle into a passing team, and that definitely plays into Denver's favor. Yeah, we definitely saw, uh, even against the Saints, the Saints defense kind of shut down uh, Russell Wilson, but Marshawn Lynch was there to make up the difference. Exactly. And <laughs> also, you know, if the Se Seattle runs well, they'll control the clock. And, you know, that's, that'll that's give less thing. time to Peyton Manning that's to work his thing. offense. Absolutely. Well, Josh, also during media day, Richard Sherman said that the receivers, the Seattle receivers, are playing hard against the defense in practice. Let's hear what he had to say. Well, it's intense. It's, we, we, go, we go really hard at practice. Um, the defense is won most of the time, you know, and getting a turnover. And I think that's, like you said, manifested itself in the game. But uh, it's going to be competitive. The offense isn't going to try to give us a chance. Now you could argue that that is one of the best groups to prepare against if you're the Seattle receivers. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, an X factor for Seattle to win this game will be their receivers. Their, their, the ability of those receivers to make plays. They've been hit or miss for a good chunk of the season. Doug Baldwin and Golden Tate have found ways to get open against weaker secondaries. And Denver's one weakness is their secondary. They've had issues at times with matching up in man, with playmaking receivers, as they did with Keenan Allen in the playoffs. I want to see what ben, uh, Doug Baldwin and Golden Tate do versus their secondary. Also, if Percy Harvin is somewhat healthy and had a good week of practice, he could make a play or two to swing the game either offensively or on special teams. I wouldn't count on him as much, though, because he does have problems staying on the field, and he hasn't really been in rhythm because he has not played hardly any snaps at all this year. But we'll see. You never know. I bet Denver wishes they had Raphael Bush to kind of oh, drive that point home a little bit with Percy Harvin. Real quick before we let you go, Josh, can I get a final score out of you? I think it's going to be a really close game. This is the matchup as a football fan I wanted to see. Not just because I picked it, but you know, <laughs> it's a great matchup. But also because best you picked it. <laughs> best defense. I like Denver in a very close game, 24-20. Even though the best defense usually beats the best offense, I think Denver's offense has something special going. I think this is Manning's year. I think Denver takes it home. Patrick? Well, um, I've got to go against that. I've seen Seattle play, and I think if Russell Wilson is hitting on all cylinders, and I think uh, that offense is balanced enough to where they take it. I'll say 24-17. Uh, okay. Well, I'm taking the Broncos 28-24. Well, Josh, thanks for coming on. As always, we'll have you more throughout the semester. And uh, coming up, we'll tell you about the youngest and oddest Seahawks fan we could find. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. 
Keeping with the Super Bowl theme, it's easy to get swept up in all the fun, watch parties, bets. It seems like everyone gets hooked on the madness. You know, that's understandable, Alex. But then there's a point where the fans just take it a little too far, and it seems two Seattle fans have done just that. They named their baby 12th Man. Not joking. Thanks to KING for this video. The baby, Sydney Lee, 12th man, last name man. See what they did there? Already all decked out in Seattle gear, and apparently she's starting to make her siblings a little jealous. We have two other kids at home that are 10 and 6, and now they want 12th as their middle name, too. Man, in, in, really? In your opinion, is this better or worse than the baby named Crimson Tide or Alabama? I, you know what? Just as bad. At least, just as bad. It's, it's probably the worst name since Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> or Dick Butkus. Okay, that's pretty bad. That's terrible. Like, what were your parents <laughs> thinking? <laughs> well, that's all for our show today. Thanks for tuning in to the bottom of the ninth on Tiger TV Sports Showtime. You can watch highlights and full episodes online at TigerTV.tv. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news. We're here all semester for you on Campus Channel 75, Monday through Thursday from 6 to 6.15. For Patrick Clay... I'm Alex Cheney. Thank you for watching the bottom of the ninth. Try to stay warm, and you stay classy, Baton Rouge. Everywhere you look, everywhere.